Quasimodo, man. Yeah. That's, that's, a new one. <laughs> that's his name, that's Quasimodo. Like that. Yeah. If you don't want to call him <laughs> Baby Yoda, then we're calling him Quasimodo. You just call him by his name, uh, Grogu. No, that's yeah. not his name. They fuck conservatives up. Uh, have so such trouble uh, with people's names. It's, it's not they his. It's not his name. <laughs> it's not his name. It's not his name. That's just ridiculous. Rico just Either calmly way, laying it down thank, there. Thank you. Either way, oh, mm-hmm. uh, today's first so story. Me. We're heading over to New Jersey for a uh, collusion uh, allegation or two. Because uh, back in September of 2022, the cannabis place, uh, dispensary in Jersey City, New Jersey, was awarded a license to operate at 1544. Kennedy Boulevard in Jersey City. Last month, the Jersey City Council approved another license for Everett, uh, for Everett Washington-based Kushmart to operate ac- across the street at 1521 Kennedy Boulevard, 340 feet from the former's location, violating the state's prohibition against dispensaries located within 600 feet of each other. The cannabis place's ownership says... Kushmart's operating reeks of corruption, so they're suing both the retailer and the city, claiming the two colluded to award a license to the peculiarly, peculiarly placed pot shop. New Jersey state law says applicants need a community partner to obtain a cannabis license. Kushmart's community partner is New Jersey Reentry Corporation, an organization that helps train and find jobs for ex-convicts, which is a good thing. The bad? New Jersey Reentry's uh, executive director and chairman is former New Jersey Governor Jim McGreevy, currently running a comeback campaign to become Jersey City's mayor. The Cannabis Place CEO, Ospert uh, Orduna, told the Post that having the McGreevy-linked dispensary located so close to his store would cannibalize business. He said he finds it interesting how Current mayoral candidate for Jersey City, Jim McGreevy, serves as a community partner for an organization seeking a license from the same city. To me, it screams conflict of interest. I don't believe in coincidences. 66-year-old McGreevy uh, announced his comeback bid for Jersey City mayor earlier this month after being out of politics for nearly 20 years. He resigned as the Garden State governor in uh, 2004 after revealing a secret extramarital affair with a male staffer who was his homeland security advisor spicy but mcgreevy insists he had absolutely no role in jersey city officials awarding kushmart's contract in an interview with the post sunday he said that their only interest is providing employment and financial support for court involved persons and that they have no financial interest in the license we shall see however he did concede later in the interview that there would be a conflict if he were actually to actually to be elected to the mayor's position. An outcome, McGreevy says, is at least a few years away. The Cannabis Place filed its case in New Jersey Superior Court, Hudson County, naming Cushmart and New Jersey City as defendants. Neither the current Jersey City mayor's office or Cushmart responded to queries for comment. Interesting revelations indeed. I'd say given the way that the law, uh, given the law that both businesses must abide by to operate legally as dispensaries in Jersey City or Duna and the Cannabis Place definitely do have a case here. But I'm not a lawyer. I'm Rico Lamid, the dopest dad on the street for Hyatt 9 News. And I'm interested in hearing everybody else's thoughts and opinions on this one. What do you think? Is this collusion, Jason? Is this what collusion looks like? It sounds like it's definitely what it sounds like, Rico. I could tell you that much. This is definitely what it sounds like. And, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, Jersey's super corrupt in that way. So, you know what I mean? Doesn't it's surprise America. me in the America's slightest. America's corrupt, dude. <laughs> Amer- yeah, America's the greatest country in the world, Rico. What do you think about this one, St. Germain? Uh, you know, things just run like that on the East Coast. It's all about who you know, et cetera. Isn't it like that everywhere, though, Matthew? Not just the East Coast? I It seems to be mostly, yeah. That's why I try to know great people. Yeah, that's that's right. I'm with you. I, I always try to network. I just, you know, this weekend I had a lot of talks with a lot of people. We were doing a chess hash and tea session, and and uh, this comes back to man. I just have a lot of faith, and I'm hoping that psychedelics can kind of fix this morass that we find ourselves in. Seems like, you know, anytime you start pulling on the knot of what's wrong, there's like 1,500 strings tying it together, and and uh, it's such a complex problem. But I think it really comes down again to just compassion. And remembering that we're all a family. Mm. You know, I might be drifting off this whole New Jersey thing. I stay away from these. Well, I mean, if, if you opened up your if you opened up your dispensary last year, you know, we're fully compliant. Go through the rigmarole, if you will. 
And then all of a sudden, right across the street, pops open another dispensary. And not only is it within the city limits of, or, 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 or not within the city limits um, of a 600 foot boundary, but it's also co-sponsored by the mayoral candidate. There you go. There. I mean, what would you think? It's fairly transparent. You know, the story basically tells itself right there. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Rico, I mean, I guess, I guess you, you, you could say like, I guess the best thing they could actually say is at least it's not a trap shop. Yeah. <laughs> what I'd really think is I'd like to know a mayor somewhere so I could have my own weed store, please. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it, Yaro. I see you itching. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, here's the thing, right? He's look- not retired from politics. It talks about how he's going to run yet again. Uh, he, he, he has a training company, so he has a vested interest there uh, in terms of those rehabilitation efforts and then you know training for uh re-entry into the legal cannabis industry so there's conflicts there one of the things they say is it's not about whether you have a conflict it's about whether there's the potential for the perception of conflict and so savvy politicians or people who understand the machiavellian nature of of politics at work understand that you're supposed to avoid the perception not just the reality of whether you have conflict. Just anytime someone says, I don't have a conflict, like you should never be self-diagnosing. You know, if you're sick, you don't go on WebMD and go, well, I must have like, you know. Tons of uh, people do that. What do you mean? cancer. I do that all the time. People do that every day. Yeah, listen, the self-diagnosis for whether you have a conflict of interest is is, is silly to me, right? And and, and so it's all because we're, 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 our, our perceptions are shaded by our own goals and self and self-interest, right? So that doesn't check out to me. The other thing is the 600 foot buffer. So I have, again, on the one hand and on the other, on the one hand, I think the 600 foot buffer is a little bit ridiculous in general, especially in high density urban areas. I think it's a restriction to trade capitalism, the free market. And it's yep. something that isn't necessarily applied to a lot of other businesses, such as liquor stores or coffee shops. And on the other hand, if you have a silly regulation that we've seen replicated in many places, then when you deviate from that regulation and it's to the benefit of an entity that may or may not have some close financial ties to a active current local politician, I don't see how that ever passes the sniff test. Mm-hmm. I don't see why they didn't just pick a, a block over and a voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's, so I can speak well, I to do. that. Like, it's right not easy to find. It, I can speak to that. It's not easy to find compliant real estate. There are sensitive use setbacks. There's a variety of zoning issues. It's not like a uh, a retail ready brick and mortar dispensary location is something you can just snap your fingers and pull out but of if a you're map. From mayor. If you're I mean, if, you, mayor, if it was a trap shop, you could. Yeah, if, if you right, if you're running for mayor, you should know the rules. And you should abide by those rules, and it, it might just keep you under the radar. Or you uh, should rewrite them, calling you out on your conflicts of interest. Yes. Or, or you should just rewrite them, Rico. Every week hey, we cover there, there's, 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 a, there's a solution. Yeah, just rewrite <laughs> the rules. If he actually wins, <laughs> you can rewrite that law, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but in the meantime, every week we cover lawsuits, and the other shop is just going to sue and say it wasn't fair, and it's going to tie it up in litigation, and people are going to let spend a lot of lot of a lot of good money on a lot of good lawyers. It'll be a great talking point during his election. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, how many times is he going to say like I did not collude? <laughs> <laughs> McGreedy and his weedy with my predecessor. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm just trying to oh, support the God. people and create jobs in my community, and I'm being chastised. He said he it. has no financial interest. Doesn't matter. Did yeah, him? but it said that his community partner is yep. an organization exactly. where he is the executive director. So again, you He's... can have a non-financial interest and still have a one hand washes the other. I just don't think it passes the optics test, and because At of all. that, a savvy politician would not pull a George Santos and would actually pull away from those things that don't look. Oh my God. Did did you see the, did you see the video where, where Kennedy (laughs) on Fox news tell, tells George Santos, he's just a straight up liar. Hey man. Yeah. Um, I might have to change my position on Kennedy. He's a product. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you should, you, you should love Kennedy. You should love Kennedy. She used to be a a DJ on, on, on MTV. I think he was thinking RFK. um, I was thinking RFK. Oh, I, I used to love her. Gla- I used to love the glasses on yes. her. Yes. Um, 
But um, uh, I, I truly think that, uh, you know, uh, from a contrarian's point of view, doing crazy shit like this is going to put you in the headlines and, and, and possibly raise his profile as a mayoral candidate. Maybe he pulls out mm-hmm. from uh, the executive board for the uh, dispensary and um, he runs off of this and his name is already in everybody's mouth regardless. You know, it sounds like someone needs to brush their teeth. All the tricks all day, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. And on that, we're going to go to a commercial and we're going to be right back. <laughs> 